Panginoon sa piging sariwain pagliligtas niya sa atin sa piging sariwain pagliligtas niya sa atin In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves for this Eucharistic celebration, let us acknowledge that we are all sinners and that we need God's mercy and pardon. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of he heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Queen of Sheba, having heard of Solomon's fame, came to test him with subtle questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very numerous retinue and with camels bearing spices, a large amount of gold and precious stones. She came to Solomon and questioned him on every subject in which she was interested. King Solomon explained everything she asked about, and there remained nothing hidden from him that he could not explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba witnessed Solomon's great wisdom, the palace he had built, the food at his table, the sitting of his ministers, the attendance and garb of his waiters, his banquet service, and the burnt offerings he offered in the temple of the Lord, she was breathless. The report I heard in my country about your deeds and your wisdom is true, she told the king. Though I did not believe the report until I came and saw with my own eyes, I have discovered that they were not telling me the half. Your wisdom and prosperity surpassed the report I heard. Blessed are your men, blessed the servants of yours, who stand before you always and listen to your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, whom it has pleased to place you on the throne of Israel. In his enduring love for Israel, the Lord has made you king to carry out judgment and justice. Then she gave the king 120 gold talents, a very large quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did anyone bring such an abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba, gave to King Solomon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in Him and He will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just man tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and his steps do not falter. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress, and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Please stand. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you O lord jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them hear me all of you and understand nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person but the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile? since it enters not the heart but the stomach and passes out into the latrine thus he declared all foods clean but what comes out of the man that is what defiles him from within the man from his heart come evil thoughts unchastity theft murder adultery greed malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Mga kapatid, Kailan tayo hindi dapat magkomunyon? Kung nagsimba tayo o nagmimisa, kailan tayo hindi dapat tumanggap ng komunyon? Well, base sa turo ng simbahan, tu turo ng katisismo, nung tayo ay nag-aaral pa, ang sabi ng simbahan ay kapag tayo ay wala sa state of grace tayo ay nasa state of sin. In other words, meron tayong mortal sin. Although yan ay hindi masyadong nabibigyan pansin ngayon kasi merong mga katoliko, kumunyon ng kumunyon, kahit alam nilang sila ay nasa mortal sin. Pero batay sa turo ng simbahan, hindi tayo dapat nagkukumunyon kung hindi tayo nasa kalagayang banal. Kailan tayo pwedeng magkumunyon? Kapag tayo ay bagong paligo? Kapag tayo ay nagsipilyo? 
magkumunyon tayo kung alam nating wala tayong mabigat na kasalanang nagagawa. Oo, kung meron man tayong mabigat na kasalanang nagawa, pero hindi tayo makapangumpisal agad, pwede tayo magkumunyon provided that the next communion will be before will be after the mass after the confession so ano ang sinasabi ko yung sinasabi ng ebanghelyo may dalawang distinction ng purity or impurity meron tinatawag na ritual impurity at meron tinatawag na moral impurity yung ritual siguro hindi ka naligo hindi ka nagsipilyo, nagsimba ka pagkagising, diretso sa simbahan. Ramdam ko yan eh, nung simbang gabi. No? Ang, pa- ang palagay ko, may mga nagsimbang gabi ng madaling araw na hindi naligo. Yun ang tinatawag nating ritual impurity, hindi naligo. Pero, doon sa mga hindi naligong yon, hindi ko masasabi, kung yung mga yon ay merong moral purity. Kasi hindi ko nababasa yung nilalaman ng kanilang puso. Hindi ko nakikita kung ano yung nilalaman ng kanilang puso. Diyos lamang ang nakakabasa ng nilalaman ng puso ng tao. Kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Ebanghelyo, Wag lamang ninyong bigyang pansin yung panglabas na kaanyuan o kadinisan. Ang importante ay kung malinis ba ang puso. Yun din yung sinabi ko kahapon. Ang importante kung ano ang laman ng puso. Kasi mula sa nilalaman ng puso, doon nang gagaling ang nagpaparumi sa tao. From what is in the heart, no? that what comes from the heart, that is what defiles a person. Kaya, bumanggit ang Panginoon ng iba't ibang mga kasalanan na siyang nagpaparumi sa tao. Hindi ko sinasabi at hindi sinasabi ng Panginoon na hindi importante yung ritual purity. Hindi ko sinasabing hindi importante ang maligo. Please, maligo kayo. Maligo tayo bago tayo magsimba o magsipilyo, kawawa yung katabi nyo. No? Hindi ko sinasabing hindi importante yon. Pero ang sinasabi ko at ang sinasabi ng Panginoon ay ito. Huwag lamang yung panglinik panglabas na kalinisan, sikapi natin ang ating puso ay malinis din. And that is what we pray for. Lord, give me a clean heart. Amen. Please stand. For Christians, there is no higher law than the law of love. Let us pray for fidelity to this, to this law and sincerity in our practice of religion. To every petition, our response would be, Father, purify our hearts. Father, purify our hearts that the church may always be renewed and be purified by the words of Christ's gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father purify, purify our, our hearts. hearts, that we may bring hope to the despairing, more through our loving actions than through pious words. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father purify, purify our, our hearts. hearts, that our hearts may be filled with Anna's desire to live for one another so that we may worship in spirit and in truth. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father purify, purify our, our hearts, hearts, that the sick and the dying may be comforted by the Father of all love and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father purify, purify our, our hearts, hearts, that our deceased brothers and sisters may join in the true worship in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father purify, purify our, our hearts. hearts. Heavenly Father, purify our hearts so that we may not lose sight of our goal to love you above all else. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and breath of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. It 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our many sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Today, being a Wednesday, I invite you again to our weekly Wednesday Rosary for Families, a Family Rosary. That will be at 9 p.m. tonight, and uh, the host will be the Diocesan Shrine and Parish of San Miguel Arcangel in San Miguel, Bulacan. You can uh, join the uh, Wednesday Family Rosary uh, through the Manila Cathedral uh, Facebook page. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen.